Is a friend of the family's and I've known her since she was two years old before she could even talk and now she talks all the time <laughs> why wouldn't I <laughs> Maisie today we're gonna make the amazing floating ball what the heck is that what is that look at this isn't that oh so gosh. cute that is like that's adorable but what does it do <sighs> okay so what would you think we'd be able to float in this um, balloons, feathers, things that are really light. Things that are really light, that's right. Watch this. So we have this balloon that's actually heavier than air, and somehow... Oh my gosh, that is crazy. What yeah, we're able to heck? float it above the funnel. Well, we took Grant for his birthday to iFly, which is an indoor skydiving place. Have you ever that... heard of it? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. So what you do is you're in a tunnel and there's air coming up from below and Grant floats above the air, just like this balloon is floating above the funnel. Here's a video of Grant floating in the air tunnel. So Maisie, the floating ball is an example of something called the Bernoulli's principle. The same principle that allows heavier than air objects like airplanes to fly or like Grant to fly in this wind tunnel. Bernoulli was a mathematician. Check out this picture of Bernoulli. Air from the straw as you blow through it produces a levitating ball phenomenon using Bernoulli's principle. The fast air moving that you're blowing around the sides of the ball is at a lower pressure than the surrounding stationary air. Stationary means things that are holding still. So if you look closely, you'll see that the ball wobbles while it's levitating in the air. The ball is trying to leave the area of low pressure, but the high pressure surrounding it forces it back into the low pressure area. I'm not a math magician, so I, I'm not. <laughs> or a mathematician, or a no. matician magician. So are you ready to make the floating ball? Yes, I am. Yay, this is gonna be so fun. Let's see what's in our kit. We have our circle stencil, some feathers, tissue paper, two styrofoam balls, googly eyes, two balloons, the bendy straw, and washi tape. On top of everything else in your kit, you're just gonna need a pair of scissors, and you might need an adult's help to help you blow up the balloon. But other than that, we're ready to get started. Yay! The first thing we're gonna do is cut out our stencil. And it does not have to be exact, so if you mess up on the circle, don't worry about it. It's gonna be okay. Okay, and now we're going to cut through the middle of our circle. Like to the dot? Yep, to the dot. And then at the dot, we're just going to snip at it a little bit with the tip of our scissors, because that is where our straw is going to come through. So you're just going to cut through the middle, and then when you get to that dot, you're gonna snip at it with just the tip of your scissors. This does not have to be a perfect circle. It's just enough so that your straw can poke through the opening. All right, it's time to get your tape. And with your fingernail, try and get the very end of your tape. We're gonna be making our funnel. And in order to make our funnel, we're gonna need a few pieces of tape. I'm just tearing like one inch, one and a half inch pieces of tape and putting them on the edge of the table like that so that when I need tape, I can just pull it off easily. Of course, you can cut the tape with your scissors if that's easier. For me, I just put my finger down and pull. Okay, bend your straw and we're gonna be putting it through the hole in our stencil and then we're gonna overlap this flap right here by about an inch to an inch and a half. That's not very much, okay? Just enough to give it that funnel effect. Yes, that's perfect. Good, hold it with your right hand and then tape it into place with your left hand. Aren't you glad we have those pieces of tape already so. measured? Oh, 
How do you secure the straw? Good question. Maisie just asked how to secure the straw. We're going to flip it over and secure the straw in on the other side. We just got to secure that flap down first. I need another piece See, of tape. See, now we have our funnel, and now we need to secure that straw. I'm putting the pieces of tape up onto the straw and down onto the paper. Just tiny pieces up on the straw and down onto the paper. And you want your straw to be straight up and down like this. See how secure that is? How does yours so straight? Maisie thought she could do it this way where she just wrapped the tape around the bottom of the straw but that's not gonna work. You have to get these little pieces of tape with the straw straight up. You put the tape on the straw and the paper. And then you go around the straw and the paper. The straw and the paper. And every time you put it on a piece of tape on, make sure that straw is straight up. Okay, now you do it. My straw is pretty secure in a place, but I'm gonna go around it one more time just because I don't want it to wobble. I want it to be very secure. Okay, so what I've done here is I have my piece of tape that goes along this line right here, and it goes along the other side on the back, and then I have tiny pieces of tape that go all the way around while my straw is straight up and down, so it's very secure. Okay, and then I went around it one more time with tiny pieces of tape. So I have about 10 tiny pieces of tape all the way around here to make sure that straw is nice and secure. Nice, you have our funnel? Mm -hmm. Does it work? Okay, this next part is just optional. I always love to decorate my stuff and make it funky and fun. So I gave you guys tissue paper, googly eyes, feathers. You can use whatever you want to decorate your funnel. Or you don't have to decorate it at all. Let's get funky. <laughs> What do you think of ours? Mine is amazing. It's beautiful. I love it. According to the Bernoulli principle, remember he said the thing, if it was round, it would, yes, it would float better because the air comes around the surface. Yes. So this is what you're going to maybe yeah. need a grown-up's help for. You, you always need to have to stretch it yeah. because these ones are really hard. That's right. Okay, you don't want to blow it up too much, about that big. And then tie it. I put my finger here, I wrap it around, and push the tip through. Can I if you can't do that on your own, you might need an adult's help. So remember, you have to start blowing first, and then you let go of your balloon. That's how it works. try your ball? Oh yes I am. All right, do you think this is gonna float? Obviously. Obviously, because it is a ball and it's lightweight. Now remember, start blowing lightly first and then let go of your ball. Maisie, did you see how when you're floating the ball, the ball is just moving all over the place? It's like spinning and wobbling? Yes, it is. That's because the air is trying to get out of this air, but the air around it is keeping it down. The air under it's pushing it up, and the air around it's keeping it down, so it's constantly moving against that force. 
Okay, everybody, I hope you had so much fun with your floating ball experiment today, learning about the Bernoulli principle, which is a really big word and a really big idea. And you guys are learning about it today with the Winkle. Have fun showing your family and your friends your amazing floating ball experiment, and we hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye. Feather went?